Uh, hey guys, uh, it's really been a while. Sorry for the lack of content on my channel. May was pretty hectic for me as it was assessment season for my university course and I really wanted to make sure I was focused on that. However, there is another thing I've been working on for the past few weeks actually. If you're a League of Legends player and you like my editing style, this is something you might be interested in. I've been working with a talented YouTuber called Vars to create content for his channel. I mean, it's basically considered my job at this point as I'm consistently making videos for him every week. At this current point, I've edited 12 videos for him over the past 11 weeks and I'll be diverting a lot of my time towards this. Anyways, for the topic of this video, let's talk about the rogue. In recent times, it's come to the player base's attention that the weapon class has kind of fallen off in terms of the amount of people that actually play them, especially in the late game. The structure that I will be taking for this video series will be the issue, followed by how I would personally go about changing the class to better suit the current state of the game. Though just for a little disclaimer, all of these are just my opinion, so feel free to start a discussion in the comments. This will be a three-part series which I release over the next couple of months. So we're going to start off with the Rogue. And before we get into the meat of it, I will say that I personally do not think the Rogue is a bad class. For sure it has its issues, but they're easily fixable. I wouldn't say this class is a victim of power creep, probably more so feature creep, though it is also stuck in a perpetual state of imbalance. I'll be using League of Legends as an example here. Sanguine Blade is an item which you can get as a good all-rounder, though it is best suited for solo play due to the passive which rewards the player with attack speed based on how few enemies are nearby, which incentivizes solo play. This means that there's a positive for playing alone, but there's also no drawback. The Rogue in Realm of the Mad God unfortunately does have a drawback for playing with other people, that being your ability. Unless you're equipped with 102 DPS cloaks, it has little to no viable use outside of its unequipped stats. A common argument is that the Rogue should just get a buff to its attack numbers. As you know, the Rogue's attack caps are 50, which is the lowest cap in the game tied with the Priest, Knight, and Summoner. Listen, as much slack as we give Decker in terms of the game's balance, they are actually right with not buffing the Rogue's attack stat. I would not say Rogue is a broken class, not for a moment, but the ability for sure is not healthy for the state of the game. I am now to remind you that Realm of the Mad God is a bullet hell game. Rogue has the capability to remove the challenge entirely when playing by itself. Right, let's look at this footage of a rogue soloing what is arguably one of the hardest dungeons to solo in the game next to the void. A lot of the phases on bosses aren't actually coded to account for somebody playing a rogue or with an item with on-hit invisibility such as turncoat cape and crystallized mist which of course would lead to things such as this. Another thing that I've actually read people say is when once the whole proc situation gets fixed, Rogue will be one of the highest DPS classes in the game, which in a way, yes, it's actually true. Rogue is held back by the flawed game design, unfortunately. Currently, the standard DPS Rogue set, excluding the Cloak of Bloody Surprises, would be an Avarice, with a Corruption Cutter as a swap out, Tier 7 Cloak, Tene and Monocle. And if you're able to get into close range, the Cloak of the Cubic Enigma is also a pretty good DPS option. When stat increase procs get fixed to stack appropriately, the DPS rogue set would probably look a bit like this instead. If the Centaurs gets procced, the rogue would get a bonus plus 49 attack whilst invisible with a Cloak of Bloody Surprises. However, this does bring me on to my next point. The Cloak of Bloody Surprises inflict a crippling slow which very much holds back the rogue. In my opinion, the least deck it could do is nerf the slow effect or rework to actually have some form of scaling. In its current state, it quite literally reduces the player's movement speed to zero. And don't get me wrong, the rogue is able to have some pretty good DPS, but even that is due to a bug with procs. The way that the monocle works is that it gives you bonus attack upon shooting whilst invisible. So there's actually a way to keep the plus 25 attack from bloody cloak when actually not using said cloak. I'll explain it simply. Cloak with bloody, turn on auto shoot, then swap to a different cloak, and keep on cloaking with the monocle proc still active. In short, the bloody cloak overrides the monocle bonus, meaning that you permanently got a plus 25 without the slow, which may I add, should not be a thing. Flawed coding should not be something which makes a class good. To finalize my point for the rogue argument, the class is really strong in solo play. One may say, uh, a bit too strong. The ability completely nullifies all enemy behavior and that's really not healthy for a game like Realm. This is unfortunately due to outdated balance. I would not have needed to make this video if pets weren't as strong as they are. When the Rogue was first released, Wild Shadow's intention was not for it to be able to permanently cloak. Though, this was something which was later overlooked when pets were introduced to the game. How would I go about fixing Rogue? This may be a very hot take, a, a really hot take, so feel free to disagree. Scrap invisibility entirely and replace it with something similar, such as dodge charts. Hear me out. 
Rogue is a solo play character, though solo play in this game is thinning. Playing in groups for things such as Exaltation Raids and Oryx 3 have had a burst in popularity with their introduction last year. Dodge charts would work exactly how you'd expect it to work. Without altering boss behavior, you have a chance for the shots to just phase through you. If I could, I would reimagine the rogue as some sort of phantom character, because in a lot of other games, a rogue and an assassin are super similar, though in Realm it's been normalized that one goes invisible and the other one kind of just exists, you know? As I myself am not a game developer or at all qualified in the fields, I'm not going to throw out any numbers like, oh yeah, tier 7 cloak should have 80% dodge chance because, yeah, <laughs> so I'm just throwing the idea out there for people to think about. If proc stacking does ever get fixed, without a doubt, I do believe that Rogue will not be as frowned upon as it is now. If you did like this video, please drop a like and subscribe because I do have to put quite a lot of effort into research, writing the script, recording, etc. Until next time, friends.